to ensure the longevity of my chat room, after being hassled about it for a very long time by some guys on my Discord server, I've decided that just relying on Discord is not going to be a good idea. So at any point, Discord could just shut the server down, they could go out of business, their servers could be down, any other number of things would be really annoying to deal with. So what I've done is not just set up an alternative over on Matrix, I want Matrix to be the new hub for all my chat rooms. Now I say it's going to be a hub because you can keep using Discord and interact with the guys over on Matrix and if I start up something else then all of those will all be interacting with the same people. So going forward I will be pushing Matrix as the main chat room with some exceptions like for community game nights because voice chat in a room isn't really great right now. There's no easy way to have a break off chat. So let's actually find out what Matrix actually is. So Matrix describes itself as an open source project that publishes the Matrix open standard for secure decentralized real-time communication and its Apache license reference implementations. Now, the Matrix open standard, you probably don't need to read for most people, but if you want to go and say, implement a new server or implement a new client or make a plugin or make a bot, this basically describes everything you're going to need to know for your relevant parts. Now, I'm not going to read through this today, but if you want to go and do so, I might leave a link to it down below. Now, the other thing we have here that every single project like this should do is a reference implementation. Now, Matrix went and did something really sensible. Rather than saying, hey, community, that doesn't exist. Go and make a server for us, and then that'll actually use our protocol. They went and made the server for you, and they went and made the best client that exists for Matrix, and you can just go and use those out of the box. You don't really need to go and make something yourself or use some third-party implementation. These are perfectly fine for most situations. Now, there are other servers that do exist, but most of the time, people are just going to use Synapse anyway. So basically, the short version is Matrix is a secure open source chat platform that you can host yourself, but so is something like IRC. So what actually makes Matrix special? So basically, some of the features that it has are end-to-end -end encryption, but... That's not really that crazy. Telegram does the exact same thing as well. You can also do voice over IP. So through WebRTC, it provides video and voice chat, which is nice. I don't really need to use video chat that often, but when I do use it for the podcast, it is nice to have something else as an alternative. It does still need some work for larger rooms. As I said, there's not like the voice chat section like Discord has. So doing break off chats with a big room isn't great because it's going to notify everyone in the room for the chat. Also with the GUI clients you get modern features like stickers, images, emoji pickers, basically the stuff you'd expect to see on something like Discord, but all of that is available on other platforms. None of that really makes it too special. The thing that makes Matrix special is the bridging. Bridging is going to let us take, say, people from Discord and bring everything they say over to Matrix and the people from Matrix have everything they say go over to Discord. So you can actually have these two communities running at the exact same time with different people in them, both chatting to each other. So to understand how Matrix actually works, we need to understand some of the distinct elements that actually exist inside a Matrix, at least at a really high level. So we have a Matrix client. This is basically what the user is going to see when they actually want to go and connect to Matrix. So in my case, I'm running Element, but there are plenty of other clients that exist as well, which I'll show you in just a bit. Now, we also have a home server. Now, a home server is basically the matrix server like Synapse that you can actually go and connect to. Now, unlike, say, a Discord server, it isn't just one individual room. What it is is a collection of rooms. Obviously, you can have a home server that just has one room on it, but it doesn't just have to have that. Now, a room is similar to, say, a channel in Discord. So if you want to find the closest thing to a Discord server, the closest thing would be a community, but communities are kind of a very basic feature right now. They're more closer to just groupings of rooms rather than the same sort of capabilities that a Discord server actually has. But I'm very much expecting that to change in the future when proper moderation tools start coming in, but for now it's very, very basic what a community actually does. So if you understand how something like Mastodon works, understanding how Matrix works is pretty simple as well because they're both federated services. So in this case, we have a very basic example. So we have three home servers, matrix.alice.com, matrix.bob.com, and matrix.charlie.com. And all three of these home servers have one user each. So Alice is connected to matrix.alice.com, bob to bob.com, and charlie to charlie.com. Now, as we can see, 
their user accounts are directly attached to their home server. So Charlie has an account on his home server, not on Alice's and not on Bob's. And the same is true for the other two as well. But because these servers are federated together, their users can communicate with each other. So in this case, Alice has a room running on her home server and Bob and Charlie are both members of this room. So if Alice wants to send a message to the room, she'll send it from her client. And then once it's reached her home server, the server will check that it hasn't been tampered with. And once this has been done, it'll be stored into the message graph history on that server. Now, once this has been done, the message will then be sent out to all of the other home servers with users involved in the room. So in this case, Bob and Charlie's home server, the same check will be done to make sure it hasn't been tampered with. Once again, it'll be saved into the graph history and then sent to the users who want to see the message. So let's say that both Bob and Charlie want to send a message. So once again, it'll do the same checks, but this time we have a bit of a problem. So Bob has a message and Charlie has a message, but the graph history doesn't actually line up. But Matrix is intended to deal with this. So what's going to happen is first, Bob's message is going to be sent to Alice and then it'll be sent to Charlie. But now Charlie has a bit of a problem as well, where his graph history is completely different to everyone else's. But luckily, Matrix is really good at dealing with this graph history and can happily merge these together. So in this case, once that message has been sent from Charlie's server, everyone then has the exact same history. So even if the servers aren't in sync with each other, clients that are connected to a server can still communicate with each other with no problems whatsoever. So let's say that Alice wanted to send another message. So this will be added into her graph history. Then it'll be sent to Bob and Charlie's. And then after that, Bob and Charlie will actually receive the messages on their clients. So this provides a fairly resilient chat platform. So let's say that both Alice and Charlie lost all of the message history. So in this case, Bob would still have a copy of it. So Bob's server could be used to recover every bit of data that was sent during that time. Now, all of this stuff is really cool, but none of it would really make me want to use Matrix. I've kind of accepted that Discord is terrible, but it's where the people are. The reason why I picked Matrix is because of the bridging. So bridging, as I mentioned earlier, basically will let you take information that's being sent on any other chat platform and then bring it all into one thing. So it's not just with Discord. As we can see, there are a bunch of other things that are supported. So we can go and say, bring stuff over from Slack. We could bring stuff over from Gitter, Rocket Chat. We could even do things like iMessage, Facebook Messenger, an email list even, SMS, uh, Skype, basically any of the things in here. And people are making new bridges every single day. So if your favorite chat platform isn't here right now, Basically, you just need to wait for a new bridge or maybe even go and make it yourself. So you no longer have to annoy the very tiny pool of people who refuse to use anything but IRC. What you could do is go set up an IRC server, go set up a matrix room, go set up the IRC bridge. And obviously, you're going to have issues with sending images across, but any of the text messages are going to be completely fine. Now, depending on which bridge you're specifically using, the documentation can be very hit and miss. I would assume... The IRC one is fairly good because the IRC bridge is one of the official bridges and it, it seems to be basically fine. Now, the only bridge that I've got running right now is the Discord bridge. It's not amazing, but it basically does the job. So as we can see, it pretty much tells you everything you need to do. But there's nothing in here about errors you might come across. It basically just expects it to work with no trouble whatsoever. Now, I can't speak for the other bridges, but the Discord bridge does basically everything you're going to want it to do. So everything to do with messages is going to be sent across. One thing that is missing is typing notifications from Matrix to Discord, but typing notifications from Discord to Matrix do work just fine. But I don't need the typing notifications anyway. That's kind of a nice thing to have plus everything else. But some things like sending DMs from a Discord account to a Matrix account don't really work, but... I can't really think of any time I'd want to do this. If I wanted to send a DM to someone on Matrix, I would use my Matrix account. If I want to send it to someone on Discord, I would just use my Discord account. But everything else works fine except for channel management, which is sort of a hack right now and doesn't really work at all. You can do a little bit of moderation, but it's not really great on Matrix in the first place. So earlier I showed you the Matrix client I'm using called Element. It isn't perfect, but it does basically everything you're going to want from a chat client. It does have some weird rough parts around the edges, especially when it comes to doing things like inviting a new user to a room. 
it can be a bit weird. So I think you go to like people and then invite. And then when you invite someone, you have to like click this back arrow or I think it's X or something and the X closes it. It's a bit weird to deal with, but once you get used to it, it's not really that bad. And this is probably the most complete client that exists and is probably the closest to Discord. Now, there are other clients you can use as well. You can find the list of those on the Matrix website. This probably isn't going to be all of them, but this is all the ones that they feel like actually mentioning. So obviously Element, which is the main one, but there's an Element for Android and iOS as well. Or there's things like uh, Neko, Fractal, or a bunch of other ones as well. So we can scroll through this big list, and as you can see, there's plenty of them to use. I'm pretty sure, yeah, there's even, there's even a 3DS one here if you want to use that. But there's also some terminal-based ones if you prefer a terminal client. Basically, anything you're going to want is going to be in here. So if you do want to try out Matrix, I would recommend starting with Element. Then if you want to try out one of the other ones after that, go to one of those then. But Element is probably the easiest one to get into. And it's the one that I know actually has all of the features that I actually care about, like communities. I can't guarantee that communities actually work with the other clients. So if you want to go and join my Matrix community, there'll be a link to it down below, probably right near where I put my Discord link. But as for the Android people, if you're using Android Element, I'll leave a link directly to some of the rooms as well, just because communities don't actually work on the Android version right now, so you can't actually join it from that link. So I think that's going to be pretty much everything I wanted to say today. I really do like Matrix. It is still very much, even though it's not technically in beta right now, it's still very much a beta application if you do compare it with something like Discord. But... It is definitely getting better, and I do definitely want to see more people using it. So, I think that's pretty much everything for me. Before I go, I would like to thank my supporters. So, a special thank you to Chris Yoakim, Donald Kulbinian, Andre Nathan, Monster Thy Will, Chico Bento, Joseph Mitchell, Peter D, Tony Tushar, and all of my $2 supporters. If you want to go and support my weapon links down below to my Patreon, leave a face, subscribe, start, all of that stuff. I've got my podcast, Tech Over Tea, available basically anywhere. And then this channel is available on Library, Odyssey, and BitChute if you want to watch on a platform that isn't YouTube. So I think that's pretty much everything for me, and I'm out.